A very warm welcome at ADIS Network Campus Berlin to all our friends, participants, and guests who came from far away to assemble here with us, sharing positions and exchanging experiences. Thank you, Hitoshi Abe, initiator of IIES, and Martha Son for asking us to conceptualize with us the third International Architecture Education Summit. We are especially glad to host this summit at the ADIS Network Campus Berlin because we may address some of our current ANCB questions directly to this distinguished round of participants. And this summit gives us the opportunity to ask these questions from a cultural perspective. The ADIS Network Campus Berlin is actually not an academic institution, university, or school. The ANCB is a new type of hybrid cultural platform. It's a physical and intellectual space focusing on the inseparable interplay between urban environment and social life. Meanwhile, it has become a cultural brand, consistently and significantly contributing to the broad discourse in national, in national and international architecture, urban design, and culture. Born out of the experience and the global network of the ADIS Architecture Forum over more than 30 years, we launched ANCB in 2009 in cooperation with universities from all over the world, mun municipalities, research institutions and NGOs, it has brought together a wide range of students, researchers, and practitioners from the field of architecture, landscaping, urban planning, related disciplines, and the wider public. Together, we have facilitated design studios and public debates on a diverse range of subjects relevant to the city and urban life, generating valuable exchange between local and international students policy makers, as well as industry and design experts. If, <clears throat> if technology is the answer, what was the question? Driven by this provocation of Cedric Price as an initial point of departure for the ANCB's approach, we are renegotiating the process and interplay <coughs> of innovation, technology, culture, and behavior in a cultural and public mode regarding our summit we start today. The architect's profession, with its enormous knowledge, experience, and skills, could play a new and leading role in this interplay of new demands. Having the bigger picture, the potential of a holistic view why is the architecture profession not taking the opportunity to claim and develop new versions of the profession that pay attention and respond knowledgeably to current and upcoming global challenges and to negotiate between increasing demand for participation and technical opportunities? Performing this third IAEA summit for us is stimulating the debate on the integration of current long-standing as well as temporary societal and political demands into the standard education curricula of architecture of architects and city makers including non-academic approaches this is what we want to discuss here thank you Now I'm introduced Dietmar Leik as practicing architect in Berlin. He is frequently involved in the ANCB's program, experienced as teacher at the ETH Zurich and the Berlage Institute for many years. He became also the interface between the ANCB program and, for example, our industry partners. With him, to, we ask him to co-conceptualize this program with us and he will direct you through the summit, and he will now introduce you to the summary kickoff, the 10 by 10 speakers. Please, Dietmar. Thank you, Hans-Jürgen. Good morning. What is the 10 by 10 format about? <clears throat> it's 10 speakers present 10 individual positions and visionary statements from different continents and fields. 
Each speaker got 10 minutes to provoke a controversial dialogue. In this regard, we asked for your subjective position relative, especially to the future challenges for the architect, but we also asked for your statements, especially in regards to your specific context, where you come from. And in general, how should architecture education prepare the profession for the new challenges? As I know, many of your statements respond to the third International Architectural Education Summit, which are the role of alterna alternative architecture education platforms, interdisciplinary strategies in architecture education, and the collaboration between architecture education and non-academic partners. You, the audience, have the possibility to ask and to discuss your questions after these presentations during the um, lunch break. I'd like to ask the speakers to stay strictly to the 10 minutes frame we gave you, please. We need to follow a strict time frame. After nine minutes, I'll give you a warning. <laughs> and I'm sorry, but after 10 minutes, I have to make it very clear that we need to stay in the time frame in regards to all of your colleagues, colleague speakers. We are looking forward, I'm looking forward very much to these 10 by 10 master positions. And what is the great thing about the 10 by 10 master positions? It also works with 11 speakers. <laughs> so, <coughs> okay, I just, I would like to uh, <coughs> give the word to Hitoshi, or to Martha first, okay? To Martha and then to Hitoshi. Thank you. There's a kind of a technical problem that uh, actually we're supposed to go first to talk about more general concepts. So sorry that uh, kind of it's reversed now. So uh, welcome, and I'd like to say thank you thank to you. all of you coming from far away. And also I'd like to say thank you to uh, Christine and Hans Jugend and Dittmer and also the many of the staff at IEDES for making this happen. Um, IAES started six years ago in Tokyo. At that time, the theme was uh, uh, global standardization in architecture education. At that time, there's a, still, I guess, there's a strong pressure from the professional entity to standardize the education towards this global license issue. And it was a really big issue in Asia or uh, 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 Tokyo. And we got together to kind of discuss what's going to happen, what are you doing, and what's the kind of a, uh, issue to, or shall we do it? And the uh, uh, end of the conversation was, we are so different, and maybe we should get together and see each other more often, not to be same, but to be different. We try to, we should really be different in uh, academia. And I think this represents that really interesting sort of point, uh, differences between the practice and academia. The practice or the professional entity by nature tend to define, they want to define the profession, they have to define architecture, therefore it could become a kind of a society uh, of the uh, professionals to get the benefit. But uh, so that's their role. They, they want to have a singular so, sort of definition of the profession to actually make profession sort of a, a workable. But on the other hand, the role of academia is not to help that. It is actually to always question what the architecture means, what, 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 how we can actually push the definition of architecture so that they could be different or could progress or could be expanded further. So it, the, the role of profession and academia is always different and that makes very healthy environment. But so, so this really uh, is a quite interesting question. And now there's so much sort of a depressed opinion about the uh, practice, especially in the area I'm kind of working and uh, some people saying, oh my, my God, there's no job. There's so much sort of a, like we feel we are more suffocated in the practice. And uh, it's kind of interesting that almost like the 
uh, strange enough that the people in the practice started to feel like the, the, the kind of boundary they created to define the practice is actually choking them. But on the other hand, when I talk to so many people from totally different industry, like, you know, let's say big company like Toyota or Boeing or uh, Disney, they, are so, they have so much positive ideas about architecture and urban design, and they are actually putting their future on this dialogue. So it's almost like there's a big differences between the architecture defined internally by architect and architecture defined by these company, and uh, there's a vast sort of unexplored area that uh, we can actually push. So more than any time, that right now it's a very important to really question what the architecture means and then think about maybe different definition of architecture and think about different way to raise architect. And the role of education is very, very important to really open up the possibilities of architecture. Therefore, I think IAES is kind of interesting because this provides the opportunity to really make sure that we are different and we to think about actually how we actually stimulate the architecture to evolve. So again, I'd like to welcome you all and uh, also it's been always fun to work with Martha <laughs> and uh, I guess now Martha will yeah. Yeah. give you the word. Yeah. Um, thank you very much and thank you for attending the, the summit. Um, in June of 2011, the second summit was held in Madrid and Segovia and hosted by my school, IE School of Architecture. And at that summit, we broadened the um, themes uh, from globalization that was undertaken in Tokyo to four themes, um, as Dietmar has mentioned. And Tom Main opened the summit with a keynote address. There were aspects of that summit that all our part participants agreed upon. Um, everybody had a really good time. The food was great. The weather was great. The setting in Segovia was impressive. Uh, even if the sound system uh, caused a lot of problems and became the inspiration and the butt of a lot of jokes. Um, when it came to the uh, content of the summit uh, two years ago, uh, the discussions, the positions, and the debates were broad and rich, and I'm sure they will be at this third summit. We seem to all agree that uh, it is desirable for schools to maintain their individual DNA, while at the same time finding synergies and areas of overlap so that we can be pollinated or perhaps polluted by our brother and sister schools and institutions. Now the feedback about the third summit spoke, spoke of the need to focus the debate and I think Dietmar, Hanjurg, and Christine and their team have done a great job in focusing the issues for this, the third debate, with the goal or the objective to take action in the future. Sharing information is positive, but information without encouraging action is a lost opportunity. So today, in the role of maybe Mother Hen, I would suggest please don't just tell us about your school, don't just do the infomercial, but really try to, um, try to share positions that can be debated and that we can learn from as we go forward. Um, my sincere hope is that this conference it will be focused and multi-layered with ideas for action, experimentation, and exchange. Um, and I know that the connections that we start here will continue in the future because my connections with this group, this independent group, which is very, very special, began in Tokyo. And over these six years, I can only say it's been more and more rewarding and more and more enriching. So um, welcome. Um, my best wishes for a successful and fruitful summit. And I know that we'll all wish that we had lots more time to talk than, the, than just these two in, intense days, but I'm sure we'll be able to continue in the future. Thank you. Thank you.